once again to Real Shame, a show where the two of us talk about our list of movie blind spots. My name is Andy. And I'm Adam. And on Monday's episode, we visited a movie that I have not, or had not seen. It was all about Ray Charles and star Jamie Foxx and was titled appropriately enough, or is titled appropriately enough, Ray. Today, Adam paired that with a movie that I've actually seen before. He's never seen. Right. And that movie is... It's also a one-word title called Shine. All right, Jeffrey Rush plays Daniel Helgott. I think David, that David. Hel- David. Yeah, I can't even read my own words. <laughs> uh, let's start this again. Jeffrey Rush plays David Helgott in a biopic about his life, mental breakdown, and his acclaim he received later in life, and that's Shine. Uh, ben Rosen, I was one of the judges. Yes. You left before all the prizes were announced. You were very good this afternoon, David. Thank you. You can play better. Well, maybe he was a little too good. Some people don't like that. <laughs> we, uh, we gave him a special prize for his courage. It's a difficult piece you chose, David. Daddy chose it. Oh, well, even great pianists think twice before tackling the Polonaise. <laughs> prize for losing. I wouldn't call him a loser. No, that's genug, that's genug. It's a spelt all for good. quite sure David could win lots of competitions with the right tuition in my card. Aye, teacher. Yeah, you've obviously done very well. Yeah. No one taught me. No music teachers, Mr. Rosen. I don't think they ever say what shine means in the movie. I guess he just lets that shine, shine, that light shine from him. He's got the shine. It's, it's the, the shining. shining yeah. He's got the shine. It's, yeah, it's, it's a prequel to the shining. That's right. Uh, it came out in 1996. It's written by Jan Sardi and Scott Hicks. It's also directed by Scott Hicks. Um, like you said, this is a movie that I haven't seen, but it's your week, so it I'm going to toss it over to you. Uh, what do you remember about Shine, and what do you think about Shine this time around? Yeah, so this was one of those movies that um, the town that I lived in at the time, uh, I was in college at the time, dating myself. Um, I I remember I, 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 I started hearing things about this movie and nobody knew who Jeffrey Rush was at that time although he you know he was an established actor in his native Australia uh he was not really an American household name kind of thing um but he starts getting all this buzz and this movie starts getting all this buzz and so it's like gosh I really want to see this movie but I didn't want to have to travel you know to Dallas or something like that to see it so it finally did come to one of the theaters that we had we had multiple multiple cinemas there at the town where I live but uh, I finally came to one of them, and I went and saw it with a friend of mine, and I, I liked it back then. I mean, again, I thought it was a, a you know, a, a kind of an inspiring story about this guy. I knew nothing about David Helfcott before that time. I still really don't know much about him, yeah. um, uh, other than you know the movie. Uh, but I, I remember enjoying it back then. I thought Jeffrey Rush, uh, his performance, you know, he's definitely kind of odd. And eccentric, yeah. uh, but I thought he was good, and I don't remember who he was kind of up against that year. But I, I, I remember when he won, I, I, I was all for it. I was, I was, yeah. I was fine with that. But yeah, um, so I enjoyed it back then. I would say this time around, um, I mean, I, I still think it's a pretty decent film as far as the subject matter goes. I didn't really, I, I don't have any huge problems with the film. I mean, I think it works overall. But obviously, again, I know we're going to talk about this kind of throughout the episode. You know, Jeffrey Rush uh, or the David Helfgott character, once he kind of has a, a kind of a breakdown, yeah, yeah. Uh, his, he's a little odd. Yeah. You yeah. know, in, in, his, in, the, in the way, and, and I know that you and I both kind of looked at like YouTube videos and stuff of him when, when the movie was over to see like, does the real David Helfgott kind of act like Jeffrey Rush? And the answer is pretty much yes, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, so uh, I think that the performance is true to life. Uh, I think the movie overall is good. I think Armin Mueller Stahl, who plays his father, is a standout. Yeah, for He's sure. 100%. Really, really terrific. I mean, aside from Jeffrey Rush, obviously, who's who's a, a huge yeah. standout and, and deservedly won the Academy Award, but Armin Mueller Stahl is really, really great as he his is father. Amazing. Uh, you know, obviously not not a very sympathetic portrait no. of the father. You know, he seemed like a very overbearing guy, at least in the movie. Um, but he's really, really great. I think. You know, if I had any beef with the film, it's that they they never really go into what exactly happened to yeah. David. 
he kind of collapses uh, after his performance of the rock th- the rack three right yep. on and off um, and then you see him getting like electroshock therapy and then he goes back to Australia and he's put placed into like an institution basically but they don't really say like what happened uh, and then and then from that point on he's just very kind of odd and yep. gets in people's faces and invades their personal space and gropes Touched women them, yeah, and kisses yeah, yeah. them and, and does you know does all these weird things uh, but that's never really delved into it's just kind of like hey this guy went through this stuff but now he's gonna you know he meets a lady and he gets married and now he's gonna play piano and again yeah. and all is right with the world but you don't really know like what what exactly happened to this guy you know I mean you can make some uh, you, you can infer some things. You know, you can, you know, definitely kind of think about it, but they don't really kind of, I wish they would delve more into what exactly, what went, where did it go wrong? Yeah. So what, what, what were your thoughts on I on think shine? you definitely, you hit every point I wanted to hit. I think, again, I don't think this is like a, a great movie, but I think it's good. It's better yeah. than average, right? Yeah. It held my interest. It was very interesting. It was captivating uh, with that. So I think it was, you know, well executed and well done, you know, like I said with Ray, it's kind of hard to have, you know, this character who in real life is very eccentric, very, you know, uh, I don't, I want to say abnormal, but not like in a negative sense. It's just his mannerisms are not what we think of a normal person, right? Mm-hmm. So it's it's abnormal. It's a, not normal. Yeah. Uh, so it's really hard to kind of do that and pull that in. I wish he kind of reined that back just a little bit because I think it is, even though it's true to life, it might be too big for the movie right and i think if you just kind of pulled that back a little bit it might have sit well with me because it was it was a lot i was getting a lot of star man when i was watching this right <laughs> where it's just like this guy's so peculiar it's really hard to kind of like you know uh empathize with them and understand what's going on because because all of a sudden you're just like you're taking aback and you just and you know you know what i mean it takes mm. a while to kind of warm up with them so for me it was just it just took me so long to get on board with what Jeffrey Rush was bringing. And like you said, it is very true to life, but it's just, you know, it might've been one of those things that it probably would have played a little bit better if it was a little bit more um, calmed down and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I'm with you on the, you know, I kind of wish they, they, they explained what happened to him and they went into a little bit more of that, you know, there, there's sections of it that's kind of like breezed by a little bit and, you know, one of the questions I had was, you know, was he a better pianist before the mental breakdown or after the mental breakdown? Like, we don't really get, like, a good comparison between mm-hmm. the two. We don't see if, like, he lost something. Like, maybe he's 50% of what he used to be or, you know, maybe because of that he's more. You know, I, we don't get any of that. And we don't get to see what the acclaim is a, about him. Is it just that, you know, what what is it that makes people – like him and support and celebrate his his virtuosity. Is it just the fact that he's virtuosis? He's he virtuosis. Virtu. He's virtuous. No, is, uh, he, is the fact virtuoso? that he's just, he's a virtuoso. Is the fact that he's a good piano player? Or is it other stuff on top of that? Right. Yeah. And so uh, some of those things just left a lot of question marks in my head. I think the the other really big thing that I think this movie did a disservice for is we should have seen that whole last uh, piece that he did. Like on the on the stage and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like it just, you know, it showed him starting out, and I think it could cut to like the end, or the audience clapping and stuff like that. And I think if we would have been there and sat with the audience and sat with him, yeah. why he was doing that, that would have done a whole lot for us and would have carried us on, right? Because it felt like the movie, because you could see him play and stuff like that, and it felt like the movie was building up to it, and and it just didn't give us that kind of like that moment to revel in the, him coming back and. Yeah. being able to play and stuff like that and seeing him play those classical pieces, right? So I really think that would have done so much for the movie, but and I and I felt that was sorely missed in this movie. I, I agree with that. I agree. So that's kind of where I am with it. I, I, I'm glad I watched it. Like I think it was definitely worth checking out and worth seeing. Um but again it just I don't think it's like gonna make like a top five list of music biopics or top 10 lists of music biopics if I've seen 10 music biopics. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I I think they do a good job, especially in the early part of the film. And again, this, this also points to Armin Mueller Stahl's character again in the movie. He's, you know, depicted as kind of almost tyrannical. uh, But 
you get the sense. I don't think they ever say it outright, but he, he, I remember he's talking to his wife in the bedroom and he's like, do you want, you know, do, do I need to tell David how your, your uh, sisters died or how my parents died? Presumably probably in world war two, yeah. uh, you know, because they, you, you they're uh, Jewish, but although they, they don't practice the Jewish faith, you know, because yeah. they talk about him having a bar mitzvah. Yeah, well, and he's like, it's nonsense. Or yeah, whatever, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. We don't see it in the movie. Yeah, um, but uh, yeah. So, but he, but you know, he kind of alludes to that, and so he, he's a guy that wants to keep his family together because he's lost family members under presumably violent circumstances, and so he, again, he's not a sympathetic character. But I actually feel for the guy. Like, yeah. uh, you know, he he loves his family almost too much. And he's such a perfectionist. And he's like, I want David, you know, David, you've got to win. You've got to win. You could be the best you yeah. could be. You could be the best you could be. I mean, he doesn't necessarily go about it the right way. And I, I don't know if you read kind of the differences in real life. Mm. There, there's a lot of blowback or pushback rather on uh, the depiction of his father. And because apparently in real life, according to some of his siblings, uh, his father was not that way. His father was actually a very loving guy. Interesting. He did not want David to go to England to study because he didn't think he was ready. Not because he just was like, no, yeah. you can never leave the household. Uh, but, you know, who knows? I and mean, you get, we're, we're not part of the Helfcott family, yeah. so we can only take, you know, this person's word or that person's yeah. word. But that's what I was reading is that the depiction of him was, was not very true to life. Yeah. And you get um, a little bit of him being like, having like, being a little like in arrested development a little bit, mm-hmm. no, David, definitely. because like some of the things he said, like about him still laying in the bed and yeah. like the, his mannerisms, the way he interacts with people. And yeah. some of that could stem from, you know, what his dad did. Obviously, like you said, we've only seen the movie and read a few articles here and there. So we don't know yeah. firsthand, but uh, yeah, but I, I, I think that also speaks to how well Armin does his role because, yeah, he's cause great. he, cause he, you you do you get all of that from his performance. You yeah. get that this just like he loves his family so much that he just like it's smothering them. Yeah, and he just can't sure. let them go and stuff like that. To the you know, and he he pushes his family so hard that they reach really high highs, but they also reach really low lows and stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, I if he didn't, I don't know if he won. I don't think he did for this movie. He, uh, he it, didn't. He was nominated. They didn't win. That's it, a snub in my book. But of course, yeah. I haven't seen what the other ones were. But. He was really, really, really good. Yeah, he's he's great. Uh, and John Gilgood is in the movie. He plays his uh, piano teacher yep. in England. John Gilgood, of course, had Sir John Gilgood, uh, you know, kind of like Laurence Olivier, was around for a long time, acted in, in a ton of movies. And I think Noah Taylor is really good yeah. as the younger version of uh, a, <laughs> a Health God. And I don't think he it was happened. nominated for anything. Excuse but he's, me. He, I thought he, I thought he was really good. Yeah, I thought Noah Taylor did a great job as uh, as the adolescent. I think they put him in there. I thought Ben Rosen Rosen uh, was it Nicholas Bell playing Ben Rosen or did I have that backwards? Uh, uh, the guy who played his piano teacher in Australia I thought was mm-hmm. really good. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a really it's a good movie. Yeah, well acted in that part well where he uh, goes in to the the little cafe that he wandered into at the beginning of the film. And they're kind of making fun of him. And they're like, play us a tune, Liberace, or whatever. And yeah. he just launches into Flight of the Bumblebee. <laughs> I absolutely love that part. It's just so cool. You're just like, wow. Yeah. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's fun. Um, all right. So it's 91% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. 90% audience score. It got, I, I believe, two thumbs up. I couldn't find the clip where they talk about it. Uh, I know Roger Ebert gave it a favorable review in print. And I'm pretty sure Gene Siskel was favorable on it. So... Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure he got two thumbs up at the time. And uh, Leonard Maltin gave it three and a half stars. Awesome. All right. All right. So let's go viewer's question. Yeah. So this week we chose a viewer's question that's on topic with our featured film review this week, and that was Ray. Excellent. And that review is, what are some of your favorite Jamie Foxx movies? Jamie Foxx starred in Ray, got an Academy Award for his starring role in Ray. And, you know, we wanted to kind of go through his filmography a little bit. I... Look through it. I'm a little light on some of his movies, so there's probably going to be some that are gems that we miss. But I will call out that you know he just recently did the voice work for Soul that we saw mm-hmm. earlier this year. Was it or, or last year? Yeah, it was this year. This year. Earlier this year. And I thought it was good. Uh, you know, as nope, I lied. Last year. Last year. My bad. I thought it was it was good. It was a good movie. Uh, well, I mean, obviously, I think you can watch our review on it. I had some issues with the movie itself, but I think his performance was good. Mm-hmm. Um, the other one, I mean, I you know I think he's well known for uh, playing Django and Django Unchained. Mm-hmm. Is that right? The Quentin Tarantino one. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
and I thought he was good in that. Uh, I think the standout on that one's Christoph Waltz. I mean, it was just like, you know, I, I don't want to say Quentin Tarantino discovered him with Inglorious Bastards, but it's like he brought him over to America, and then we got to revel in the awesomeness that is Christoph Waltz for a bit before yeah. Spectre. Yep. Uh, but I think for me, and I'm talking a lot, sorry, uh, I think the my favorite performance is one that we mentioned during Ray, and that's Collateral. I really, I really, really dig Collateral, uh, the movie, a whole lot. I think Tom Cruise is excellent in it. I think James Fox is excellent in it. And it um, can't remember the director's thing about Did he, right? Is that my briefcase, homie? Yeah, yeah. Michael Mann. Michael Mann. Uh, great, great director, Michael Mann. Uh, so that's 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 me. I, I would choose probably Collateral as my favorite Jamie Foxx movie performance, et cetera, et cetera. I, I, I'm like you, I, I'm looking through his filmography, uh, I'm pointing this way because my phone, I just set it down, I was just looking <laughs> through it. Um, I, uh, I, I'm looking through it and I'm like, gosh, I, I really need to see a bunch of these movies. Yeah. Uh, but yes, I, I, I have seen him in enough to form an opinion and I think I'm going to go kind of the reverse of, of maybe what you just said. I, I think Collateral will probably be a runner up for me, uh, but Collateral is, is, a, is a cool ass movie. Uh, but I think Django Unchained is probably my favorite Jamie Foxx performance. Yeah. Again, he's great in Ray. Um, but uh, Django, Django yep. kicks some some serious booty. You can't go wrong with Django. And booty call kicks some serious booty. <laughs> booty call the movie that he's in. Uh, no, uh, Django and Shane, that was good. We're, and we're not saying Sp- Amazing Spider-Man Two, unfortunately. Uh, As Electro, <laughs> Amazing Spider-Man Two is wretched. Um, I, I don't think he's necessarily a bad mo- a bad uh, actor necessarily in that movie. I don't remember. I think he's okay as Electro. I just thought the movie was terrible. The movie's terrible. Just the story and everything. Just about everything went wrong with that movie. I feel bad I feel for like Mark Webb, who directed those two movies, because those movies were terrible. Yeah, it's, it's really it's bad. It's not his fault. I think it's the writer's fault, or Sony's fault. Yeah. But, uh, like I said earlier, maybe the new Spider-Man movie will give him a chance to redeem himself in that stuff. I think we've got a few Jamie Foxx movies that are like on my list to see. For, right. for, for the show so we'll have to knock some of those out yeah. I know Any Given Sunday is a movie I don't think either yeah, one of us either one seen. of us seen it so you might be great in and that and everybody's like what yeah. Any Given Sunday you haven't seen that nope nope we'll have to do that for sure alright guys well it's your turn let us know what your favorite Jamie Foxx movie or role is hey we didn't mention Living Color but I loved him we both liked yeah, him in Living Color he's awesome, awesome. Yeah. And, uh, he's a talented guy yeah, yeah, I mean, he really sure. is um, so just let us know if you're watching us on YouTube, leave a comment down below, or if you're listening to us, shoot us an email, realshame at gmail.com. We also answer viewers' questions that are sent to that email address. So please send us those viewer questions. We would like some more. So if you have some time, send those along. We would appreciate that. Um, like, subscribe, share the show, do all that social media stuff because it really does help spread the word of the show. And we really do appreciate it. And stay tuned next week as we cross some movies from my list of shame. And we'll see you soon, guys. Bye.